the train in Frankfurt to get the train to the airport to go to Edinburgh. Yes. Exactly, German. Oh, learn, learn about German. Stand and Elfin's channel. Yeah. See you. Uh, no, <laughs> yeah, see you there. <laughs> Together podcast. My name is Becky, and I'm coming to you from a very sunny and beautiful, actually, Frankfurt, Germany, where I currently live with my two little kitty cats. So yeah, it's so nice to be back with you guys. It's been ooh, a month, at least. Um, yeah, I just you know I thought about getting around to recording sooner, and it did not happen. <laughs> but I am here now, so yes, 
good to see you. Um, I will put my social media up on the screen so that you know where to find me. Basically, I'm Soprano Knits everywhere. So, yes. <laughs> uh, feeling out of practice, as usual. Um, but yeah, why don't we just jump into some stuff, right? Yes, okay, two quick things. One is that we have a giveaway um, at the end, or I'm gonna announce the winner at the end for the Ovis Etc. mini skeins for the Dora Smiths. And then also I have some pattern giveaways to announce, which I will also do at the end. Um, yeah, just so that if you're not interested, you don't have to sit through it now. Um, and the other thing is I just want to thank you guys so much for the warm welcome for the Dora Smiths pattern which has been released since last we spoke, so here they are. Hopefully you can see them okay. And um, yeah, so basically thank you, and I also want to let you know that Saskia of Ovis Etc. has kits up in her shop. She had some before they sold out, and now they are restocked at ovisetc.com, which is her new website, which is beautiful. So if you want to make the mitts with the same um, mini skeins that I use, uh, you can go over there and get that as well as she has a couple different options for the base. I used Martin's Lab um, Zelazna wool for the base but she also has some options so you can just get your whole kit. And since we're talking about them we're gonna do a knit along you guys. It's a little impromptu um, and I'm a little scared because I don't think I've ever done a knit along for one of my patterns before. Is that true? Yeah I don't think I have. Um, but a lot of you guys seemed really interested in them, so thank you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there was interest in a cow, so why don't we do it? So today is, I think, the 11th of April. Why don't we start it on the 15th and have it run for like a month and a half because they do need up, knit up really quickly. Um, so we'll have them go through May. April showers, spring May flowers. Ah. Um, let's do it, right? Doris Smith's cow. And I think I will give you guys an extra entry if um, you use either Ovis Etc. and or um, Martin's Lab Salazna Wool because you gotta support the people who gave me our support. And it's beautiful and awesome and yeah. <sighs> Good, okay. <laughs> I feel awkward today. Um, but what else is new? I feel awkward pretty much every day of my life, I guess, so yeah. So let's move right along into what I have finished recently in the knitting world. And da da da, you might notice I am wearing one of my finished things, which I was knitting last time. And while that was quite a while ago, you guys, if you're keeping up, I did it. I finished. I finished. I finished my EYF sweater that I knitted eight days <laughs> from start to finish, including blocking. Yes. So this pattern is the perfect crop top pattern by Teresa Gregorio, and if you search for it on Ravelry, it's abbreviated to TPCT. Yes, the perfect crop top. So that's it. And I, sorry, my cat is rubbing up against my um, tripod. But I modeled it, totally stole it after um, Casey Maurer's version, which she did striped and I just loved it and totally ripped it off because also it allowed me to use up stash because I didn't have enough yarn to knit it in a solid color and I love it. I love how it turned out. I'm super happy with it. So if you're interested in the yarns that I used, I talked about them in my last episode and I will also put them on my Ravelry page. But I am so happy with how this turned out. So yeah, it's a cropped sweater, although I actually knit it quite a bit longer than um, than the pattern called for. So it hits me, like here's my waist, so it hits me like at the top of my hips. Uh, and yeah, three quarters length sleeves, although I do wish I had knit the sleeves just a hair longer. Um, other than that, I don't know, I love it. And I met Casey at EYF and she was wearing her sweater that day and we got like a twin picture together, which I'll probably pop in here. Pretty great. <laughs> It was just perfect. So yay, I got it done. I am an insane person who knit a sweater in a super fast, short, short, super short amount of time. Nailed it. Uh, yeah, so I finished one other thing, which was my Hugelich hat by my awesome and lovely friend Verena Kors. 
And yeah, I knit this out. I don't think I mentioned this last time. I don't think I have the tag right next to me. Oh, so I'm gonna have to put some info on the screen. But this yarn was a gift from Maria. Hey Maria of Tuscan Knits. Um, and it is Abundant Earth Fibers. I don't remember the yarn content, but it's gorgeous. It worked amazingly well in this pattern. Um, it's basically, as you can see, just a heather gray, but it has these little like black hairs that run through it and it's super beautiful. So it is basically now too warm to wear this, <laughs> but it is uh, a really warm hat because it has a double folded brim that seam together, which I love. I've done that in hats that I've knit before and it's great. Um, so yeah, it's an awesome pattern. The one thing, if you're going to knit this, and I have talked to Brain about this, so she might update it. Um, if you knit from the chart, the chart is correct. Um, however, for my brain, it was not intuitive that a few times you have to like jog a stitch from the beginning of the round to the end of the round or vice versa or whatever. And it, when you look at, it's in the written instructions. And when you look at the chart, like, it sort of tells you that, but it wasn't obvious to me. So that's all. It's not a mistake, but it's just my brain didn't understand it. Um, so that's the only thing I would say is just like refer to the written instructions before you start knitting from the chart. But other than that, amazing. I love this hat. And I guess it'll be ready for when it gets cold again or if it gets cold again, because you never know. I think since I'm from Chicago, I don't really trust the fact that spring has arrived. I just expect it to be winter again tomorrow, uh, which could happen, but weather seems to be more consistent in Germany in general, so I don't know. I'm going to take a sip of my tea. I'm drinking out of a mug that Hannah gave me for my birthday. Hi, Hannah, because I saw Hannah, you guys. Ah, I'm going to talk about that later, but I'm drinking Earl Grey with milk in it. I'm sorry, Hannah. I should be drinking the tea that you gave me, but I want to draw gray with milk in it. I know it annoys you. Ha ha ha. Although I did ask one of my other English friends if he was annoyed or what he thought about it. And I think he said he was not horrified, which I think was the most positive response that I've gotten. So I put milk in my Earl Grey tea. Sorry. Okay, moving on to whips. Um, my works in progress are kind of like a weird mess of a jumble right now. Um, so yeah, that's just how I feel, but I'll kind of go through what's happening. Um, Design-wise, I've been working a lot on a design that will be in the next Making Stories book. Well, the next one is coming out very soon, Breeze, but the next, next one called Jewels. Um, yeah, I will have another design in that. So I've been working really hard at that and um, working a bit on the sample, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, the pattern is sent off, sent off this morning. Feels good. Feels good to have that out the door. Um, but yeah, I can't show it to you, even though I've been working on it a lot. Because it's a secret. But there's that. Um, and then other than that, um, I've been working on a collaboration that I'm doing with Hannah of the Corner of Craft and Gabby of Once Upon a Corgi, again, because we teamed up last year to do a sock collaboration, and it was so much fun. We loved working together, and you guys really seemed to like what we came up with, so we are doing it again. Um, and yeah, we had like this, I got the yarn at EYF because it was sent to my friend Caitlin of Wool Jewel, who has an American military address in Germany. So anyway, she brought it for me to EYF. Um, so I'll show you the yarns. This is the main color and then our contrast color. I'm splashing on my camera, but I think we're good. Um, the contrast color is this kind of very pale pink. So yeah, socks, you guys. And it's on the Marie Cutie base, which of course, wait, I think I do have the tag. It's Cory Dale, 75% Cory Dale, 25% nylon. Yep, nailed it, nailed it. So 
Yeah, it's beautiful. I knit with this base once before from Gabby and oh, I just love it so very much. So um, I wasn't going to show you this. Not that it's like a secret secret, but you know, it's just not finished. However, I did something crazy yesterday and I'm proud of myself and want to tell you. So I'm going to show you. Um, so uh, I did sock surgery and cut my sock apart, <laughs> which I've never done before. So I always knit my socks cuff down, which I did in this case. I wanted, as this were in spring, I wanted it to be a shorter sock anyway. Um, but I just wasn't really happy with how part of it was looking up near the cuff. So I inserted one needle beneath where I wanted to cut and one needle above and I cut it open, you guys. And it was actually scarier than when I steeped my sweater, even though it's just a sock. It just felt wrong. You know, you're supposed to steep a sweater, you're not supposed to do this. But it was way better than ripping out the entire sock. It really wasn't that hard. And um, if I remember, I'll put the tutorial below. I just Googled it and found a YouTube video of how to like cut your knitting and seam it back together. So I haven't done the seaming part because I'm fixing, I'm fixing it, but yeah, basically it's going to have um, a textured part up here and then it has um, some lace running down it as you can see, you know, it's this cute little sock. I like how it turned out and Hannah's working on a super cute progress keeper. Um, once I get this fit back together, I'm going to write up the pattern and um, start looking for test knitters. So if you would like to be on my test knitting list, um, either for this pattern or just for something down the line, do make sure that you're signed up for my newsletter, which I always, I think, have linked below. There is a little box you can check when you sign up if you would like to hear about test knitting calls. Otherwise, you will not get those emails, but I'll send out a special email about test knitting. So that's all. Uh, yeah. So that is coming down the pike soon. <laughs> Um, then, what else? Then, well, design-wise, I started working on a new shawl design. Um, I'm not going to show you the very small progress I have on that because it's been knit and frogged and knit and frogged and knit and frogged. Um, basically, I don't know how to execute what I designed, <laughs> uh, which happens. And, uh, you know, I could change course, but... I really want to figure out how to construct it in the way that I want it to look. So I'm going to return to it, but it's been a little bit on the back burner just because I spent like an entire weekend knitting it and frogging it and got frustrated and then had to change priority to other things. So anyway, but I do want to show you the yarn because it's amazing. So um, I have two of these caked up, but I have two more. This is Knit Craft and Knittery yarn. It came all the way to Germany from Australia from Morgan. Hi Morgan, if you're watching. Um, so this is on her fingering weight base, which is 100% sustainable Australian merino. This color is hazelnut gelato, which I just fell in love with. You can see why. And this one is called the Naked Truth. So there they are. I love them together. I am really excited. And I have to say, I've knit with a lot of merino. Um, a lot of the merino I've knit with in the past has been superwash merino. Um, but I've knit with plain merino before. But this is the softest merino I've ever felt. It's like, I don't know. It's super buttery and, but it's natural, you know, and you can feel that it's natural, but it's so soft. I am obsessed with this base and I highly recommend it. Um, I found out about Morgan because her, this base actually was featured in Socks 2018 along with one of my designs. And um, yeah, I mean, I was just looking through there and they used all natural sock yarns that were non super washed and with no nylon or anything. Um, and then I, yeah, I found her online. <laughs> you know, I read her little profile, which was awesome. And then I found her online and ended up contacting her. And um, yeah, she's one of those people that I clicked with immediately online. <laughs> so it was super exciting to be collaborating with her on this project. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited to figure out how to do it. Because <laughs> I know once I do, it'll be a really relaxing knit. And I need that in my life right now, you guys. So 
Knit Craft and Knittery, a little bit of stash acquisition, I guess, but kind of more appropriate in this section. Moving right along, just two more things. These are not my designs. One of them is that last time I told you my tale of woe about the neck of my Pullworth sweater and how I had to rip that out. Um, and that was right before I went to Edinburgh for the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. And I had like nothing on the needles to bring with me <laughs> on that trip. Um, so I cast on just a sleeve, which I've never done before, but I got the idea from Anna of the Dunkelgrun podcast, because um, she was saying that she did that to make sweaters more portable, is that even if they're a seamless sweater, like a raglan sweater, which the Polworth is, that she'll just knit the sleeves and then seam them together later, which is kind of what I'm doing with the sock, right? I just cut it, well, except for I cut it first, but so I decided to try that because the, the sleeve is just stockinette and, um, and uh, decreases. So that's how far I got on that. I haven't worked on this for the past few weeks. I sort of just lost steam. <laughs> But, I mean, the good thing about it is, is that, you know, if I ever just need a vanilla thing for a second, I can pick this back up. So, yeah. That's what I did. I did um, a provisional cast on on the top so that later I can unzip it, pick up the stitches, and then uh, steam it back on. And I, I'm not going to finish it because I'm pretty sure on this pattern, you separate for the sleeves super high up, actually. Um, so it's hard for me to tell exactly how long I'm going to want it, I think, until I'm able to try it on. So I think I'll just knit down until I think it's about kind of close-ish to the length I want it and then just put it on waist yarn until I have it seamed together. That's my plan for the first time I've ever done that. But I don't know. <laughs> I haven't felt like going back to that neck after the issues I had. Um, so it's just sort of like on hold indefinitely, which I don't like. I feel like having sort of whips that I'm not working on really eats away at me because <laughs> I'm super type A and I just like, I don't know, it bothers me. But this one I might just really let sit for a while because especially now that it's warming up, I don't see myself wearing that sweater for a while. So maybe late in the summer, early fall, I'll pick it back up. I do really want it. Yeah, I just got frustrated. So there's that. Um, I don't know if I've worked on this. I guess I did have something else, vanilla, but I didn't even want to do the heel in Edinburgh. Like, <laughs> that strip, which I'll talk about later, was so short that I was like, I don't want to knit a heel, I just want to knit a tube. So that's why I brought a tube. Um, is I was knitting a vanilla sock with Hannah's yarn, the corner of Craft. Uh, but I don't even know that I've knit on it since the last time. I talked to you, but it's beautiful, so I wanted to show it to you. I've just had zero sock mojo, except for the ones I'm designing. That's always different for me. It's, it's just more interesting. Um, and then. bummer but yeah the light has probably changed a bit because it's later now um it's actually a little after eight o'clock um these cats love driving against the thing anyway um i'm going to carry on <laughs> i went ahead and saw that i had a little bit that i could salvage and then i edited like the intro together because you know i just wasn't in the greatest mood after that happening Anyway, we are going to move along, and this will probably be shorter than it was earlier. Um, anyway, my very last work in pro progress is a very new cast on, and it was a bit of the spur of the moment decision, um, but I decided to cast on the tambourine, excuse me, the tambourine cardigan, which is a pattern by Julia. Clay, Julia. Farwell Clay. I got it right earlier. <laughs> You'd think I would be well rehearsed by now. But anyway, um, it's in Pom Pom, I believe, issue 11. And it has been in my favorites 
and at the top of my queue. It was one of the first patterns that I ever really fell in love with on Ravelry. Um, so yeah, I'm knitting my own. And another big part of the decision to knit one came from my friend Ruth, who has one that I tried on. And um, I find that the set-in sleeves fit me so much better than any raglan cardigan I've ever made, so I'm really excited about that. Um, I was looking at a lot of yarn on the internet for this, but I decided to knit from Stash, and I'm very excited. So, um, yeah, I'm using some yarn that I bought at EYF last year, actually. This is a Blueface Luster Masham Marble Blend that I got from Laxton's. They were there last year selling yarn, like, super cheap. Um, so I think I got five skeins of it for, like, 20, 22 pounds or something like that. Um, yeah, and I had kind of been holding on to it for an Endowa sweater, but I don't see myself being in the mood to knit that anytime soon, so I decided to use it for this, and I'm really excited. I think it's going to be like a perfect fit and a really versatile sweater, which is especially important for a cardigan. So I was just knitting on it a little bit while I was editing, but um, all I have is about an inch or so of ribbing, um, so it's not very exciting to look at. but. Um, yeah, I, I have a lot of train knitting coming up and theater knitting and, you know, stuff like that. So I think it'll be really good to have around. Um, so that's my last work in progress. Yep, I think I talked about all the other ones. Yeah, before my camera, or my, my camera didn't die. My microphone died. But, um, the good news is, is that I think I'm better in focus now, because I'm, although my head's getting cut off, but whatever. Um, yeah, I wasn't super in focus before, because I decided not to use the autofocus. Let me know what you guys think about that, if you like it better or worse. I know it makes noise, and it makes the, the screen go in and out, and I have a new lens on my camera, which I was going to talk about later in acquisitions, but we'll talk about it now. I have a 50 millimeter lens. Um, on my camera that was a present from my friend Kevin who was super into photography and I doubt you're watching this but thanks Kevin if you are watching this just don't tell me because I'm embarrassed that you like watch some of my podcasts and didn't it or yeah but anyway that's very nice very very nice birthday present so thanks present for the podcast I've been meaning to get one for myself anyway so it was perfect uh great so sewing which you may have noticed as well, since I took the sweater off from earlier, is that I finished, I don't think I even talked about that I was gonna make this recently, because I've had the fabric for a while, but this is my Moneta, Moneta dress from, um, whatchamacallit? Yeah, it's from, whatchamacallit, you know, Colette patterns, and it's done. I haven't taken really good pictures of it yet, so I don't know if I'll be able to insert one here or not, and the light isn't great anymore, but um, yeah, you kind of get the idea. I'm not going to stand on the chair. You know, it just goes down there, it's a skirt, and then it has pockets, which I love, and yeah, it was super easy to whip up, and I used a twin needle for the first time, which I really loved. I especially love that I did not have to make a neckband for this, because I hate that. Um, yeah, I really like it, and I love this fabric. I don't know what it is or, you know, I, I got it from the store in my neighborhood that, like, doesn't have anything labeled. So you just kind of, like, feel the fabrics, and you're like, that'll probably work, and then you buy it. But, yeah, I think it's a really beautiful fabric. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's black, but it kind of looks like there's lights coming through it, and... You know, it's a pattern, but it's subtle and neutral, and it's just great. It's just great. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. Uh, and I have plans to make the Astro Top still. I've pieced together the pattern and cut out the pieces, and that's as far as I've gotten. So it's another Colette pattern. Um, my first time doing, like, a button-down shirt, and I think I'm just a little scared of it. There's a lot of things going on in it that I've never done before, but I shouldn't be scared, because that's sort of... Everything in sewing is new to me still. So yeah, but I also, I've just been thinking about, and this is part of like how I ended up casting on the tambourine cardigan, is I've been thinking so much about my wardrobe, especially as the seasons are changing and like what pieces are missing or what pieces that I have in my wardrobe that I really feel good in or really noticing what do I wear all the time instead of just looking at patterns 
sort of in the way that I used to buy clothes and ended up with a huge wardrobe before I moved to Germany, just like, oh, I want that. <laughs> you know? Um, I just don't want to end up sewing a bunch of dresses that I'm only going to wear once every six months. Um, I want to sew pieces that I'm going to be wearing every day. So, yeah. More on that later. I might kind of create a larger plan and talk to you guys more about that in the next episode, but I have more to talk about today, so we're just going to move right along. We're going to move past it. Um, yeah. So let's talk about a couple of acquisitions. Um, went to EYF, as I'm sure you saw in the beginning, and that was lovely. I didn't go with a shopping plan, which was dangerous, but I actually didn't do too much damage. Um, I bought two sweaters quantities and the new line of magazine and, that, and a gift, and that was it. Um, so I thought that was pretty good. And I felt not so bad about buying the sweaters quantities because, well, I have only have set plans for one of them, but my parents also sent me a little bit of birthday money ahead of time of my birthday. Um, so I put that money towards one of my sweaters quantities, and then it was nice when I Skyped with them on my birthday to be like, here's exactly what I bought with your money, which is nice, right? But anyway, I got the new Lina from Isolde, and I want to make the Stelastite sweater. Um, I think it's really beautiful. First of all, I love turtlenecks, and I just think like the color work kind of detail on it is really stunning, so I'm excited about that. So I bought, um, Four, I believe, skeins of this, which is from Halvik, which is based in Bavaria and Munich, and the yarn comes from there, it's spun there and everything, which is cool, but I went to Scotland to buy yarn from Germany. Um, but yeah, so I bought four skeins of this dark gray color, which is called Obsidian, and then just one skein of um, this mustardy, it almost looks like it's turning out a little bit more orange than it is in real life, just because of the lighting right now, but um, the color is called Henna, and this one was dyed by Hey Mama Both, who they were sharing a booth at EYF. So that's really awesome. I probably am not going to cast this on until the fall because of the color scheme and just it's going to be like a warmer woolier sweater. So not really something I think I'll feel like knitting in the spring and summer months. But that's fine. Like I know that I love that sweater and want to make it. So. I have that, and then I bought a, another sweaters quantity, I just have two with me, I bought three, of Moleview, which I was really excited to see there, I really admired their Instagram <laughs> for a long time and have never seen the yarn in person, so that was really awesome, I wanted to buy so much more than I did, um, and I bought this like right at the bitter end as, the, um, as everything was closing, <laughs> so yeah. So this is like a pretty heavy fingering, I would even say sport weight actually. Um, and again, it's like, I told myself I wasn't allowed to buy gray yarn. Oh, gray yarn, knitting with, but I mean, this is like, a, you know, this is like lavender gray, sort of light bluish, purplish something. Um, and I almost bought some of their mohair to go along with it, but they didn't have enough of the color I wanted. So I haven't decided if I'll use that with it, what I want to use this for, I don't know. Will I design something? I don't know. But my plan is for it to be a sweater. Um, and I really loved it. And, you know, once I got there, I was sort of like, I'm turning 30 this weekend, treat yourself. So I did. <laughs> so I'm very excited about those. Um, and then I was very, very lucky to receive a few very kind gifts. So as I believe I mentioned <laughs> a couple hours ago when I recorded the first half of this, um, Gab I, I got my collaboration yarn from Gabby of Once Upon a Corgi, and Gabby and I are birthday twins. So um, she included a little extra skein for my birthday in my package, and that was this, and it's so, so beautiful. Um, so this is also on her Marie Cutie base, which is her Coriadale nylon base, which I adore. And this color is called Blood Moon, and it's oh, it's really, really, really pretty. I hope you can see that well enough. Um, yeah, so I have no idea what it wants to be yet, um, but we'll see. Until then, I'm just going to enjoy staring at it. So thank you so much, Gabby. I love you. 
Um, and then I got a really amazing gift from my friend Patricia. Hi, Patricia, um, of the Nitography podcast, and she's P Fortune on Instagram. And if you know her, which I really hope that you do, and if you don't, you need to. Um, she is working on a super special project right now where she's making mitten blockers and sock blockers from birch trees on her farm um, in support of her dream of bringing her own sheep um, to her um, little farm in Norway, which is awesome. And I ordered a pair of her mitten blockers right when she launched them. And the way she was doing it was you email her and then she would invoice you on PayPal and I didn't get invoiced and I emailed her and was like, oh, I'm not sure when you're doing this, but you know, I haven't gotten my invoice. And she was just like, I know. And I was like, no. So she, my mitten blockers were a birthday present from her at EYF. And I'm so sad because we missed each other. She ended up having to give them to Hannah because she had to leave. But I guess she left like two minutes before I arrived at the corn exchange. It was really tragic. But anyway, here are my Salvo mitten blockers, and I adore them. I've already used them. They're just so special. They're so beautiful, um, and they're handmade, and I don't know. Just knowing that these were handmade by my friend is so, so, so special to me. And she also gave me some of her bee butter, which is super lovely. So, yeah. Um, definitely get your hands on some of these. I will put the link below. She also has sock blockers, if I didn't already mention that. I can't remember what I just mentioned, you guys. Wow. Um, and then, of course, Hannah, who was there, and we cried when we saw each other, of course. Um, Hannah also gave me a really, really sweet birthday present, and I didn't bring everything over, but I brought the yarn. So um, she got me two skeins of this Ulsent from Swedish Wool. Again, it says fingering, to me it's a sport because it's 300 meters, but in this dark gray, and this one's called lightest gray, and it's oh, really, really nice and cheap and wonderful, and I know that she got these from Midwinter Yarns, who was at UYF, so you can get it from them if you're interested in getting some. They'll probably turn into a color work something or other, and thank you so much, Hannah. I love them, and I love you, and I love every part of my present, but mostly. I love you. Ah, okay. Um, so that is it. That is it. Um, in terms of things I've acquired, uh, yeah. So in terms of life stuff, I guess I was only, or I did before, only talk about um, the sort of events that I've gone to recently. Um, and the second time around, I don't really want to talk about them that much. Um, I went to EYF in the footage in the beginning, you saw, I don't want to like name drop every single person I saw, but um, as I mentioned in my last podcast, I only went, I was in Scotland for like 17 hours and that was insane. I mean, that includes like time spent in the airport and stuff. And uh, I don't think I would do it again, but I don't regret it. <laughs> Um, it was just worth it to see people and I mean Hannah and I hadn't seen each other in like seven or eight months um, I got to see a lot of my friends that I haven't seen in a while um, and then you know a lot of um, internet friends that I have had for years especially I will name drop I will mention <laughs> Amy and Debbie who are the periscoping sisters they were some of my first like internet knitting friends who introduced me to this like online world of crazy knitters and um, yeah, I don't know. I've always felt really, really close to them, so getting to meet them was just like, that was a huge, huge part of it for me. That that was really special. I love you guys. I love you. Um, yeah, but it was super overwhelming and exhausting, and yeah, it was a jam-packed time. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was good, so. Again, I don't think I would do that again for such a short amount of time. I definitely want to go to UAF again, but just, that was crazy. Um, but yeah, and then the next weekend, um, I went to H&H &H in Cologne, which was just like an industry. It was only for industry people, so you're not there shopping. You're just sort of like 
uh, people go on yarn stores go to sort of like shop for yarns or designers go to sort of talk to yarn companies and stuff and I basically went because Claire Mountain um, invited me to go to a fiber company event which was cool because I've already designed with them before and yeah that was super fun and my friend Verena who's the wool club went as well with her husband and I love both of them and we had dinner afterwards so that was really fun and uh, yeah so I also showed you some uh, some footage of the train ride which <laughs> it's worth it just to go on that train ride you guys I always take the slow train because it goes along the Rhine and you get to see castles everywhere and you get to pass the Lorelei which is like a really famous statue and it's magical super magical in the Rhine Valley um, so yeah, and then the following weekend I saw Verena again, I, and Verena was at EYF, so we saw each other three weekends in a row. I went to Marburg, because um, she was there over Easter weekend with her husband's family, and um, Ruth lives there. Ruth of Rain, Cloud, and Sage, who I've mentioned a bunch of times before as well. So the three of us hang out, hung out and walked around the city, and um, had lunch, did some knitting, and it was and then went back to Ruth's house and she made amazing scones and we got to hang out with her adorable son and it was just a really, really, really nice day. Uh, yeah. And then I also put in some footage the other day, I went on a, a wine walk thing. <laughs> it's like, um, again, in, yeah, we went, um, took the train up to Oppenheim and uh, went on this like, oh, wine, you buy a glass and then you go around to these different booths, like you hike up into the vineyards and there are different um, wineries that have um, little stands where you can buy glasses of wine or bottles of wine and you carry your, they give you like a pouch so you can carry your wine glass around all day and you just like hike and drink wine and eat all day. Um, my little draw, it was for my, it was my friend's birthday so we went and did that, that was really fun. Uh, yeah. So that's about it, I guess. You know, I've been working a lot and singing a lot. I have an audition coming up, blah, blah, blah. But that's all pretty normal for me. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so that's mainly it. I am going to move along into giveaway stuff. So um, I have the giveaway winner to announce, and then I also have some pattern give giveaways to announce as well. So. Um, yeah, so for the, the winner da, 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 of the Ovis Etc. Um, mini skeins that now I have cat hair on them because I placed them down somewhere in my house. So I really hope you're not allergic to cats, winner. If you are, I will lint roll these a lot. Um, anyway, so the thread for these was in the Ravelry group, and I asked you to talk about someone really important in your life. Um, and if you need to pick me up, go and read those comments because there were some super heartwarming stories on there. People posted pictures of their loved ones. A lot of people talked about the person who taught them to knit. Um, oh, I don't know. It was, thank you guys for participating because I'm like getting chills just talking about it. Like reading those comments was really, really beautiful. So I watched the thread, but I left it up because it was great. And the winner of that is, uh, was number 34, who is Angelic Embers. What, what? So please get in contact with me with your um, address, <laughs> with your full name and address, and I will get them sent off as soon as possible. So the best way to do that would probably be to email me at sopranonics at gmail.com and just put in the, in the, yeah, just email me. So other than that, we have a couple of pattern giveaways that were generously donated by my friends. And yeah, so the first one is the Something Wicked Mitts by my friend Kristen, who is of Woolen Van Yarns and the Yarngasm podcast, who I got to see in EYF. Hi, Kristen. Um, so yeah, they're a gorgeous mitt pattern. I will insert a picture here. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's one. The second one is the Chances Wrap by Nina Phillip. Um, which is like a big, big old wrap with a bunch of colors, so I will put that up here. Boop, 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 boop. And the third one is the new sock collection from my lovely friend Ellie of Skein Deer, of course. And um, I forgot the name of it because it's something in Norwegian, but it's like sock blah, 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 something, but I'm putting it on the screen. They're beautiful though. So yeah, so we're going to do a YouTube giveaway 
Um, so I want you to comment below with something really nice, something nice that you've done for yourself in the past 24 hours. So that means if you haven't done something nice for yourself yet, you gotta go do it first before you comment. And then I also want you to tell me um, which of the patterns you're interested in. So it could be all three or it could be more than one. Um, but I will like filter them and choose the winners based on people who want, who actually want the pattern. You know, like if you're like, oh, you know, I'm not really into knitting socks or whatever, but I really like the wrap, you know, just put that on there in some way that's probably shorter than what I just said. <laughs> so that I know, if that makes sense. So, and then I will announce those, wait, no. Very important. Also, put your Ravelry name below so that I know how to contact you. Because I won't announce it on the podcast. I'll just, um, before I record the next podcast, I will choose those winners and then I will let the people know, the designers know to who wanted to gift it to you. So, yes. Nice thing you've done for your, yourself in the past 24 hours. Which pattern or patterns you're interested in and your Ravelry name. Those three things. Got it? Get it? Got it? Good. Okay, so I think that's it, you guys. I am going to sign off <laughs> again and get to editing this thing because tomorrow I have to go um, rehearse an opera in a castle far, far away. Um, that sounded like way cooler than it's gonna be, probably. But I'll film some of it and you can see it on the next podcast. Um, <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, what do I have to remind you of? Be happy and knit. Um, <laughs> Oh, uh, if you're interested in um, test knitting, I'll put the link to my newsletter below. Um, also a good idea to sign up for news and discounts. And the Doris Mitz Cal will start in a couple of days. Um, so do it, knit those with me. Uh, yeah. Subscribe if you want to keep up to date when the next thing is. Thing being podcast. Wow, okay. I'm going to be tired. I'm hungry. So I'm going to go do all the things, but I'm really glad that I got to spend this time with you twice. <laughs> and then um, I hope you enjoyed spending the time with me. So I will see you guys in the next podcast. Bye. Mm -hmm.